and gave him his righteousness. And it was the Father who brought the Son back into the family. And God has done the same for you and I. Amen. We Amen. have been grafted back into his tree. And because of that, we should bear godly fruit. Amen. Amen. So I told you all that to ask you. When the boy got all this stuff and they killed the fatted calf, did he leave and go back to the pig pen? No. no. Did he say, thanks, Pops? I really appreciate that. My belly's full, but I really like it back there. What was the father expecting? <clears throat> that if you come home, you stay home. <clears throat> Not because you have to, but because you want to. Because you've learned in the pig pen, they don't love you, but I love you. I loved you when you were here, I loved you when you were there, and I love you when you're back here. Amen. Come back. So brothers and sisters, next week, let me ask this, am I preaching next week? Because I've given dates out to people and I can't remember what those dates were. Am I preaching next week? Ricky, am I preaching next week? As far as I know. Okay, so next week we're going to look at what the fruit of righteousness really is. Oh. Are you sure? Because like you said, mine doesn't happen because I can always do this. And uh, give me, once I give out a date, I give that date, I just don't remember the date. So you are on for next week, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so, no getting up? No getting up. I'm not bad, so you got three weeks. So listen, so when I come back... You may want to squeeze Ray in before that too. Well, I think Ray will give me a chance. We talked about that. Yeah. So, think about this. What has God done for you? Do you still think that you have to come to God in your way, with your righteousness? Because mm. it's not going to work. Either you accept Christ and His free gift, and you realize that in Christ, my sins, past, present, does it stop there? No. Christ died for the sins of the world. Amen. That means when He died, you weren't even born yet, and yet your sins were covered. Right? Yeah. That would be the sense of your entire life. So while you're living this out, your sins are covered past, present, and future. Now, the Bible says, plainly, John says this, I would that you not sin, right? And he wouldn't have said that if he didn't mean it. But he says, if you do. Now, that's not willful. No. Okay? Uh, there is venial sins. In, in the Catholic faith, there's venial sins, there's moral sins. Can't remember if there's one more. But the difference is sins that happen, like let's say that I fell off of this and I hit my head on that and a word came out of my mouth that shouldn't have come out. Okay? Mm -hmm. That wasn't willful, that just was a, you know, if you drop a five pound weight on your finger, that can trigger some things that happen that come out of your mouth. Okay? But let's say, let's say, now see, that's a certain type of sin, right? That's what John's talking about here. Let's take the sin of Ray has a really nice truck in his driveway. When I cut his grass, I look at that truck, and I make sure I blow off everything around that truck and not get anything on that truck, because that's a nice truck. Yeah, it is. Let's just say, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Let's just say that, that one day, Ray lifts the door open, and I know how to hotwire a truck, and I take that truck, and I plan it out. That's a different kind of sin, right? It's a willful sin. Now listen, God has covered both. But God doesn't want you to continue to live in willful sin. Amen. This is what He's calling for you today. Is your life on a path of willful disobedience to God? Amen. God is calling you to come back. Come out of that pig pen. Amen. Don't stay there. What's that? Presumptive sin. It's another one. <clears throat> God has covered sin. All of it. But He doesn't want you to stay there. He wants you to come and He wants you to know what it means to be a child of God with all the power, all the victory, and all the love that He has for you. God never pulls away from you, but your sin will separate you from Him. Come back to Him. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 318. <laughs>
you come here and you become a part of this church family and you want to work, realize I will ask you to do things on the spot. Deborah, I've asked her to do something special for us and she has most graciously agreed. And Patty, I was wondering if you would just... Can you turn it up, Gary? Which one you have? I was wondering, Patty, if you just could play that song over again, real soft. It's just a beautiful time of our, of our service when we can ask people to uh, make a decision about what we've heard. We just sang a beautiful song that says, Whiter than snow, we don't have to be afraid of our God. He's made every provision for us. Amen? He's calling us to come to Him. And there are some here who perhaps have never been water baptized. You've never uh, followed Jesus into the baptismal waters. You've never said, my life is going to start over brand new. I'm going to give my heart to Jesus in, a, in, the, in the water of baptism like we saw Sue Ellen and Jim do just two weeks ago. Amen. There may be somebody here who has not put their um, all on the altar. That 100%. If, if, um, why don't we bow our heads and, and uh, just... If there's something that you would like to give back to Jesus, let's close our eyes so that um, it's just between us and God. If there's something in your heart that you want to give up to Jesus this day, would you would you raise your hand? There's nobody watching, and at this point, I don't even want the camera on the on the people. Just raise your hand towards God, and can you say, Lord, I want you to take this from me? Can you just say that out loud, Lord? I want you to take this from me. Lord, you know all about it. You know what it is. You know how long I've been clinging to it. You know how many times I've prayed over it. You know what you can do that I can't do for myself. Amen. Put your hands down now. And ask the Lord <clears throat> that as he's been so gracious to give us this message today of 100%, we were supposed to give ourselves 100% because Jesus has done more than everything we need for us. Can we give our hearts 100%? Amen. Would it be just for this hour, just for this day? He's promised that he would be with us throughout the, throughout the day. He doesn't ask you to take it for the rest of your life. He said, Can, uh, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He's asking you for today. And then tomorrow, he'll ask you for tomorrow, and he'll give it to you tomorrow. Amen. Can you make this promise in your heart that you'll say, Lord, take my heart. Let's say this out loud together. Lord, take, take my, my heart, heart, my sinful heart. My sinful heart. I cannot keep it for myself. I cannot keep it for myself. But I ask you to take it and keep it for me. I ask you to take it and keep it for me. So that you can make me whole and righteous. So that you can make me whole and righteous. In your image. In your image. As you have promised. As you have promised. Now let's just ask one more thing. Is there anyone here who has come to church before in your life but you've really never made the full step you really haven't made the full step to, to just say Jesus I surrender I need you as my Lord and Savior and I pray that right now those of you that that know someone don't, uh, don't push them in the aisle <laughs> but if there is someone who would like to come out to the um, aisle right now and come to the front you're welcome to do that we would love to pray with you so those that, uh, if there's anyone here who wants to just come to the front and needs prayer, please come to the front. And the rest of us, let's just say amen. Amen. And uh, let's ask the Lord to uh, bring conviction to us as each of us needs you. Pastor, would you finish our, our, our service? Heavenly Father, as we stand here with our heads bowed, with our hearts given to you, Father, I pray that you will come upon each one of us. Lord, we have been waiting for the outpouring of the latter rain. Lord, we have been told, we have been shown by your word, we have been shown by the spirit of prophecy, that the day will come when you will pour out your Holy Spirit without mixture, that you will give us this latter rain. Father, I pray that we will be that people, that we will be this generation, that you will use us to finish this work. Father, I pray that you help us not to be double-minded, not to be half-hearted, or even three-quarters hearted. But I pray, Father, that you will help us to give 100% of our heart to you, that you can change us and recreate us into the image of your Son. Father, this I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
uh, Sue Ellen and Jim, if you guys can go to the back so that we can give you the right hand of fellowship as we dismiss.